Cleveland Rep Tool and Gauge Corporation, Cleveland, Ohio, with a 50. I wonder uh, if that was the sales company that sold this lathe to its original owner. Crafted here, we're off on another adventure. An ad popped up last night. A uh, small South Bend 9x24. The thing looks really great in the uh, in the picture. I don't. What can you tell from a picture? But um, anyways, it's not too far from where I work, so just emptied some stuff out of the back of the truck, and I'm going to go down and check it out. Kidding. <laughs> Warming this place up. Oh, I gotta get a furnace in. Man, you have added on to this house. Oh yeah. Wow, I'm longing for a workshop space that's that got this much room in it. <laughs> You know, I've, I used to use these. I've changed over to the propane ones with the, uh, not, well, I like the ones with the tiles in the front of them. So uh, they're, uh, conventional gas furnace. yeah, that's the best, al best alternative. So this is it back here, huh? Yeah, So is this, uh, did you repaint this? Did you repaint this? The fellow that had it before painted it. He stripped it and painted it. Um, okay. Now I notice you don't have a chuck on here. No. This is the way I got it. Now I have my leg. Oh, okay. See, it's a long bed that are almost impossible to find. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a long bed in a uh, South Bend. They're very hard to find. I went to oh, Maryland to get that one. Okay. Well, that's a nice tray. Yeah, that came with the deal. Mm -hmm. What it was, I bought this for a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He found a mill. And the guy wouldn't sell just the mill. He, he had to buy the lathe and the mill was a package. Mm -hmm. So I told him I'd take it. I was going to put my collet set up on this mm -hmm. and just leave it with collets. And now I'm, I'm finding out this building isn't as big as I imagined. Yeah. I'm running out of room. I've got a, I've got a mill about like that. Eh, yours is a little heavier than mine. Yeah, this is the heaviest one I could find. But, uh, yeah, I had the, uh, here, we can plug it in. Okay. Let's find the cord. I just got it sort of wired. Sort of. Yeah, this, um, we, we bought this place. Gutted the house and um, went to, you know, re, re, you know re, overhauled everything, rehabbed everything. Oh, wow. The switch is off. Why is it running? I don't have it wired. Oh, okay. I just got a direct wire. I haven't got mine figured out to get the reversing wire on it. There's uh, videos online. There's some online stuff, so I just want to feel it. Okay. It was wired in when I first got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good starter lathe. I got the cover here. Oh, you do? Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, that's about it. Okay. Well, the cover's probably done. Well, you got some tools. You got tools in there, don't you? You know what year this one is? Oh, here's a cover down on the bottom. Yeah. 
I've had several of these south bend lathes. The serial numbers they put on there before 1960 mm -hmm. don't mean anything. They, they, they don't refer to a year or anything? No. So these are all numbers. If it had prefix letters on it, it would date it. But no, I've researched and worked on these. I've had a dozen of them over the years. Hmm. That's why my buddy called me. I wanted to know if I wanted it. Okay. So I noticed you had. The, you said you had a sander. Yeah, right there. That is a bear of a sander. <laughs> what, what's the voltage on it? 110. Plug it right in. And what's the? Uh, do, do you have a platen for this yeah. side? That the thing. Man, I was when I bought it. I was going to build a little platform out here on a base board, you know. Mm -hmm. But again, where am I going to put it? In here. I've got another one. I bought two of them off a fellow and had them on Craigslist. Uh huh. And I, the one over there was sort of buried in his barn. Mm hmm. So I just took them both. Were they both the same? No. No? The other one's, uh, it's an integral one horse motor, uh -huh. but it's, uh, I'm waiting on a, a platen backing for it. I ordered. Yeah. This didn't have one. There's no evidence of one. Yeah, I've been kind of looking for one of these too. I don't have a really good belt and disc sander. I just yeah. got a big cheese one. I bought one Harbor Freight, and um, it's a. It's, it's kind of. I gave it to my, one of my sons. <laughs> it was. Well, I've got one that's made by the same company, and uh, I went all through it. I've got it set up as a knife grinder now. Okay. But, yeah, I had to build the platen out. I replaced all the bearings in it, put good fasteners on it. Well, I've had that Enco. I've had that Enco belt two-inch combination for good Lord. I've had that 25 years, I suppose. Yeah, those 2 by 42s are that's pretty a, handy, too. Those are 2 by 48 just Or 2 by 48 This is a 6 by 48 6 by 48 okay. With a 12-inch disc. And I'll make a deal. I'll yeah. I'll a package deal. Okay. Because I need the room. Did you do any digging to see if you can buy this part? No. No? It doesn't look like it'd be all that terrible difficult to make, but... This one here, it's a... It's hard to believe that big motor's on only 110. <laughs> yeah. One horsepower. <clears throat> well, you got a nice workshop here. Hey, I saw one of these a guy had, and he had a beautiful 20 to 1 gearbox underneath of it. He had it all set up for metal cutting. <laughs> Do you have one you've done that to? No. That oh, that I is a metal that cutting. Is a metal cutting, yeah. Yeah, small metal cutting bandsaws are hard to find. Very hard to find. Yeah, I haven't been able to find one yet, so I've been thinking about converting one. And they're expensive. I found that one used. Yeah. And uh, what I've been doing, I'll give you a tip, is I buy bandsaw blades longer than what this one takes. Okay. Because you go to um, any of the places to get bandsaw blades, they're like 50 bucks, 80 bucks. Uh huh. So I buy this size blade. Mm hmm. And I take them over here to uh, uh, a grinding shop on the other end of Webster, on the other side of town. Uh huh. And they cut them and weld them together for five bucks a piece. Oh, well, that's a bargain. Yeah. Yeah, because that's a hard weld to do without the right tools. Oh, yes. Yeah. My dad used to have a shop, and he had a nice, he had a great big do-all, oh, yeah. and then had the welder on the side. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a retired tool maker. Uh, yeah, I've used them. 
Well, okay. that was my grandfather's. Was it really? And for a long time, couldn't find blades for it. And don't you know Harbor Freight's selling the blade? Oh, the right length blade? Yeah. So it's a little bit of an oddball length? Yeah. Yeah, and what's nice about if, if a guy's going to, for a small shop, make a metal saw out of one, usually these really old ones got a thick cast iron backbone. Yeah. It's a little more possible to do. Right. Yeah, I helped a friend convert a, a with a, a, it was a four speed Lima Drive. Lima Drive? I don't know it what it that is. It looked like an electric motor. Mm hmm. But it had a shifter on it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, a shifter. So it had like a gear, an actual gearbox. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this one has a gear reducer in there. You can't do anything with it. Yeah. Two stages you can put the belt drive on, but uh, the gearing is built in. All right. Well. So what kind of deal you make me on both of them? Sure. Uh. You, you get them both out of my hair for four fifty. That means fifty bucks. I'm sorry. There's just five and fifty for that. Okay, I'll do that. So it's got. You, you can. You're going to find that no matter. Right. And. Uh, I say the, the half nuts were good. This thing had a, a, a homemade thread dial. Yeah, I'm shocked. It looks like neither one of your legs have a threading dial. Oh, that one does. I just haven't put it on yet. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll find the box that's got the parts in it. Oh, you got some miscellaneous stuff down there? No, this goes. I haven't got organized yet. This yeah. This oh, there's. Oh, wait a minute. This is change gear, right? So. Yeah, okay. to, I didn't even make any attempt to get the gear lash. And Been up and down the road with these things for years and years. I had a 16 inch top of them laid in them. Oh, that would be, that's too big for this garage, isn't it? Had, had to downsize. And, uh, There's these, there's this shaft here, mm -hmm. and these fit in there. They're a real treat to try to put together. There's a spring goes in there too, but what, what you end up with, the way it works, does is when you tighten that you pull that ah. and forces those out against that oh okay so that's that diameter that's the lever that pushes these shoes out yeah that's yeah. when you wind that star knob mm -hmm. that's what you're doing is you're pulling that in now these look like those might I yeah those are the shaft 
Those are the shaft pieces right there. There's two pairs. It's an interesting groove that one's got. Yeah, there's a little. Um, oh, I see. There's a little ring there. A little retainer ring goes on there. Yeah, that but, one don't have. It. <clears throat> well, you'd have to take it off to get it apart. Actually, I don't know if I have one of them in my spares or not. Yeah. It's so you're you're a South Bend fan, it looks like. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I know every little piece in them. Yeah. You have a press in here? You don't have a press, do you? Press now, sort of. That, uh, that yeah, I've got a, a, you This looks like the small end. Now, South Bend like to use those um, taper pins those on that shaft. How are you going to load this? Well, uh, this has to come off the top of this uh, toolbox. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to load this in one piece. I don't think so. Not not with about about two more men. No, I I brought them in, I brought them in in pieces. So. Yeah. There's a Yahoo South Bend Lay group. Yeah. And it's mostly a bunch of kids. I own one of these, or one very similar to it now. But it's not as clean as this one. Uh -huh. That is an... I haven't adjusted anything. Oh yeah, so the hinge isn't in the right spot, is it? No, but it's yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had this addition laundry room in this building built on the back of the house. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I like about it is it's not possible to fill it up with cars because you. I don't want any cars. <laughs> yeah, I mean you have a, a one car door and then a lot of workshop space. No, you know. I've had that. That was a single car garage built onto the house, but those are everything we need for that. The factory. Yeah, there's the factory it's threading dial. Threading dial. Yeah. And a micrometer carriage stop for like gold. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And a taper attachment. 
Yeah. That's right. What, are you missing the clamp for that or what? No, it's on there. I think I've got another one. Yes, this is the one I use on this lathe. You just got a hundred dollar part. Man, you are all right. You know that? That's awesome. <laughs> I don't need two of them. And okay. it came with that lathe. Yeah, it's the same it's color. It's kind of beat up. But, uh, but yeah. They're cool. So you were telling me these long bed south bends are real hard to find. Very hard to find. So how big a piece can you turn in it? 36? I, Maybe more. I've never measured it, but I know... You know, that I almost, know lo that almost looks like... Uh, I, uh, I, I bet you'd get 40 in it without the chuck. Well, I run... I turn rifle barrel. Yeah? And they're 30 inches when you get them. There's 34 back to the... Back to the front of the jaws? Yeah, I had a, I had a wood bear <laughs> center in there. I did some wood turning. Yeah. One brother says I'll go to hell for turning wood on this lathe, but... Yeah, what's, <laughs> what's it going to hurt, you know? Heck. Not really. So, I'd rather have wood chips and everything than uh, yeah. metal chips. And... Well, you, you know what year this one is? Again, the serial number back here yeah. doesn't have a prefix. Yeah. That I one of them I had a, had a tag on it. Mm -hmm. It said the finish of this machine conforms to the war standards or something like that. <laughs> it was World War II. Yeah. But they were from the thirties or forties. Oh, this is from the fifties. So what's this arm here for? This bracket. Oh, that's your back here. Oh, okay. That one? Yeah. That's your back. No, I was thinking of this this piece here. That holds my collet lever. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So that's okay. Oh, there's one thing on that lathe out there. Yeah. I didn't point it out. Like I'm telling you, you're not getting a chair. Mm-hmm. You need to search around and see if you can get one of these. I have one. Then you're in business because that one has the knurled end of it broke off. Yeah, I think I have one. Okay. Uh, my other lathe has got a second, uh, what do you call this, the bull gear? Yeah. Okay, I've got a second bull gear where somebody's replaced the tooth. That, that's very and, common. And then later, they must have got unsatisfied with that, and so they replaced it with a new one, but I've got a complete bull gear with a replaced tooth. I'll tell you how that happens. It happens, it's very common. You're running in back gear, mm -hmm. all right? And there's adjustments under here for the tension and, uh -huh. and the location detent. Uh-huh. And, it, and you're running on a heavy cut, uh -huh. and this thing works back until it's only partially uh, engaged in the tooth. Uh, there goes that tooth. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like you would really like some some tension on that handle. You do. There's. Um, uh, so it's not going to vibrate. Correct. There, there's uh, yeah. adjustments underneath it. Did they ever make these where they weren't Babbitt? Those aren't Babbitt. Oh, these aren't Babbitt? These have ball bearings in them? They don't have any bearings in them. It's just running in cast iron? Yes. Okay. Now cool. They have... I haven't had that apart on mine. And they have oiler wicks. Mm-hmm. These are... These fill a reservoir. Mm-hmm. In the casting. And they have um, oil wicks. Mm-hmm. I just bought some new ones. Um, and when you pull that... Spindle out, those will pop up. Now mm -hmm. you can't. So what you do is you push them down and stick a needle in to hold them down. Okay. And then pull the needle out when you're once you have it assembled. Yeah. That's another little tip. Um, but you see, this one is it's showing the same kind of wear as on that other one. And this one here, I can hold by. I get this trued up real good, mm -hmm. indicated in. I, I can hold a half thousandth and at least six inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I haven't done that procedure on Another mind thing it. I changed on this, this is what they call large dial. Yeah, nicer dials. You can get them for this too, but I didn't bother. I don't, that doesn't concern me. On the, the small dials, mm -hmm. you have to divide everything by two. You want to take ten times off, you turn this five times. Right. This one's direct read. Okay. You want 10 off, you take... Do change. people still make these? No, these are... You have to get them from salvage. Yeah. 
I was looking for something to talk about a shaft. See, I've got some. Yeah, you got a quick change in there, all right. A lot of face plates. I've got. Ooh, I've got a couple little chucks like that, but no backing plates to get it on my lathe. Oh, you got a steady and a follower rest. Yeah. Those things are gold. The, yes, and the steady, I put the bearing, roller bearings on. Ah, yeah, I see that for now. For the kind of work I do. Yeah. The follower rest, I've never had much success using it for anything. I looked at this, this is for moving. <laughs> Boy, that's an interesting uh, dead center you got there. A big bowl? Yeah. Yeah. That's homemade. Picked up somewhere down. Field. What is this part in the corner here? That is nothing to do with the lathe. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, that's just stuff I threw. Oh, you got a little pistol in there, too, of some kind. Oh, yeah. It was a project oh. way back when it got in a flood since yeah what I did then I made a 22 out of this old revolver <laughs> it's a single shot 22 and it's, uh -huh. it's, like say it was submerged and it's, what was it originally like a 38 or something yeah it was a 38 Smith & Wesson this, this is a Smith & Wesson well it's in sad shape now <laughs> yeah 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 projects uh, I've got, Interesting. I've got too much stuff. You do, yep. I've got hit and miss engine to finish one of these days. Oh, yeah? All the casting kit I bought up at that model engineering uh, shop. I've watched a couple of those videos. It's kind of tempting. I'm always trying to make things I can actually use, though. Uh huh. Well, yeah. Um, if you ever you try to remember, I'll write down a little. You can they have a website, and their show is next month. Yeah. Oh, I won't be able to do it next month. I'm I've, I've got a trade. It, this is still my, my next month is April is no, yeah April is out of sight for me. Google names. Names. North America Model Engineering Society. Okay. Where's it held at? Wyandotte, Michigan. Okay, that's, that's like not too far right away. Right on Detroit River. Not too far away, then. No. Man, I love that work. It's like a school workshop I table. I an auction and about had... It about come to fist fight. People fighting for this? Yeah. Yeah, what'd you have to give for it? Uh, I gave about 250 With the vice? No. But it's got drawers on both sides. Yeah. Terrific bet. Two fifty. Wow. So if I run across one of these for a hundred bucks, I'd be plumb oh, stupid not to snap it up. But it did. You didn't get these vices, though, huh? Or you yeah, did? That came on. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. Well, those vices are worth two hundred fifty dollars. Well, I, I've got a third one someplace. I haven't found it yet. Yeah. I took it off because it was in the way. Yeah, I don't know why you would need. Uh... Well, a lot of times. There's no dog holes here. You need some dog holes in it. Well, no, I'm gonna draw. Yeah, but I mean, just stop her. No, I don't want. You don't. You're not going to do that. Kind of work. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I've got clamps and right. clamps and clamps. Yeah, and why drill up your nice uh, work yeah. surface? There's, this is a work surface that's really chair height or big project height. Yeah. So well, I built this on that. Now I can start making the drawers. I mean, mm -hmm. nine drawers, and this is the back side. Yeah. What What's that going to go under? One of those benches. Yeah. I'm waiting on the drawer slide, bearing full extension slide. Mm hmm. Oh, they should be here, but now they're not. Very nice. All right, well, Dave, I'm going to get going. What was your name? Jack Baker. Jack Baker, Dave Thacker. Dave. Very, very pleased to meet you. I appreciate you showing me your shop. It's always fun to see another man's yeah. workshop. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, hey, if you want to write my number down, I don't know how often you run across stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I realize it's not as nice of a lathe, but the Craftsman uh, Atlas stuff, I like I like vintage iron. So. Well, there's, there's some guys I got to call and tell them the lathe's gone.
There's a couple more in the house. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, it's a Dave Thacker. C-K? T-H-A-C-K-E-R, yeah. And uh, anything you get that's Atlas or Craftsman. Yeah, my brother has a... One of my one brother has an Atlas slave. Yeah. In his basement. They had I had this except for that uh, bandsaw. Mm hmm I had this equipment in a basement. Yeah. Before we moved from Wow. And it flooded. Oh. Eighteen and a half inches wide. The stuff I had to scrap and the stuff I tried to salvage took me three months. Mm hmm And the neighborhood was getting shabby anyway, so I, I cut bait, sold out, bought this. Mm -hmm. Well, you got a nice workshop here, and it's not in the basement. You're, you're not going to be hauling stuff up and down stairs. No steps. <laughs> <laughs> it's all one level. Yeah, get you a, uh, a unit heater in here, and you'll be set. I'm going to put a conventional gas furnace in the middle. Yeah. And just have elbows on the top of it. Yeah. You know, they've got the ones that hang from the ceiling that are low them. profile. I've had them. You don't like them? No. Yeah. Uh, I could put a furnace in a 40,000 BTU, 50,000 for half the price of one of them. Yeah. But it takes up floor space. <laughs> yes, I thought of that. I was going to put a pellet stove in. And then I have to uh, fuss with pellets. Yeah. You have to store them. And All that fun stuff. I think I'd put it over on this wall between the door. In the yeah, garage door, rather because your your center yeah. of the floor space once right. it's there, that's right. not a very movable movable yeah, thing. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's a consideration. I move that rack there. Uh -huh. So I get these cupboards in the drawer cabinets in. I can get stuff out of the way. Yeah, get some of these stacks I got out stuff of here. In boxes and bins and. Well, one of these days I hope to have a workshop like this. I'm working in a two car garage right now, and I've got. I've got a lot of little lathes. I got about nine lathes. Oh, risky. Yeah. yeah. So I've got uh, three. I got two 10-inch Atlas, yeah. one 12-inch Craftsman, uh -huh. a South Bend workshop lathe, which might be just one inch bigger than the one I just picked up. Um, they made a, a, a ten. It might be a ten, but a it's light a light ten. They call it. They got a heavy ten. It light might. Ten. It might be a nine. It looks very similar to this one, except one of the feet has an adjustment screw in it, and it says workshop lathe on it. I've seen that. Yeah. Um, so you can get the old. You can re research and find the old literature and, and, and see it. You know. Yeah. I've got a bunch of old literature in a binder here someplace, but I have no idea where it is. But then, and I've got uh, those crappy uh, 109 lathes or whatever they are. I've got like three of those. That's the little ones where the dials don't, uh, the, the lead screws aren't such that one turn is an equal oh. distance. This, this, this size no, 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 smaller, smaller oh, like this. Okay. And um, one of those, uh, I'd like to do a project someday where I take like the crappiest lathe Sears ever made. <laughs> and change it over so it has English dials and just make a nice little closet size lathe out of it. Yeah. The nice thing about those Atlas and Craftsman is they have tink and taper bearings in the headstock. Mm -hmm. So do you have chatter problems with that because it doesn't have bearings? No. no. The other thing, what I, the other thing, why are my ducks and I put this stuff? I just brought them out here yesterday and one package came. Um, did I maybe stick them in here? No. Uh, okay. Oh, I'll show you something else on these things later. No, no bearing of any sort. Replace the uh, one. In here, in here, mm -hmm. they have shims. So you can tighten it up? Yeah. But boy, it's very, very sensitive. And you take a 
thousandths out and it's locked. You know, and you, it's, I would almost think you would need a surface grinder to do that job properly. Uh, these don't come off. You don't have that slit in there. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just the slice through there. That's all I did part not, of the cap. I did not notice that no, there wasn't, no cap to come that off. wasn't a cap. No. Wow. I'll never find you. There they are. Here's your capillary oil, the oh, wicks. Okay. I found them a guy on eBay making them and selling them. Interesting. So that spring, yeah. is there a ledge in the bore so the spring doesn't run against the shaft? Run against the, the only thing the shaft is the Oh, this end. This, this end. end. Okay. And then the shim that I was telling you about, there was a guy selling a shim assortment. In brass. Well, some brass, the thinner stuff is metal or steel. Mm -hmm. But um, and he, in his ad, he said he's not making any more. Yeah. I don't know how he made these, whether wire EDM. I can't imagine he built dies and stamped them. I can't believe he sawed them out and filed them. So he said he wasn't making any more. So yeah. I, a lot of work. Maybe he was out of stock. Maybe he just had a little scraps and either that or it's just more of a nuisance than he wanted to get into. Well hey, I'm gonna get going. I got somebody expecting me. So I sure appreciate you showing me around and uh you bet. and I'll, I'll, that lathe will get put to good use. I'm sure it will. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Take care. Oh, I didn't give you my phone number. Uh let's put that on that slip of paper. And if uh yeah, if you run across anything like that, just give me a call. All right, coming, uh, going back to work from picking up the South Bend lathe. Like uh, all these jobs, we have to had to take it completely apart to uh, get it in the vehicle, so two men can handle it. There's no point in uh, injuring yourself lifting this heavy stuff. Um, I've actually got a home in mind for this lathe. Uh, a friend uh, or a customer in my business uh, needs a lathe in his workshop. So I think I'm going to call him and we're gonna, I'm going to unload it over in his workshop. Um, I also got, uh, I don't know if you saw it in the video, but I got a, uh, a Dayton uh, 6x48 belt sander, one horsepower, 110 volt, um, and a 12 inch disc on the other side. Now the side with the disc is missing the uh, uh, the plate to rest the part on uh, so I'm gonna he gave me that basically for 50 bucks so uh, there's no way I can lose on that I should easily be able to sell it for 100 125 150 even missing that part um, it doesn't look like it'd be too hard to make a part I think before I make a part I'm going to uh, do the prudent thing and uh, shop uh, eBay for used parts probably not going to find that uh, so it'll either be uh, you know resell it or uh, or make a part and, uh, and and guys and gals this is how you increase your workshop I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work I bought something that wasn't uh, complete but I believe I can sell it for more than I paid for it or I can maybe find a part and I can end up with um, a $400 grinder maybe I've only got a hundred bucks in so only time will tell but you have to be able to you have to be able to let yourself go to take a chance to take a risk you know if it was a perfect tool in pristine condition um, with every single part I wouldn't have been able to buy it for 50 bucks <laughs> but generally speaking when something's wrong with a with a machine or a tool or anything um, it sells for less than the uh, than the real reduction in value. You know, if you've got a car with a thousand uh, dollar repair needed on a door, crunched in door or something, um, and you don't make that repair, you're not going to get a thousand dollars less for the car. You're going to get two thousand less for the car. And it's just you know everybody's looking for the shiny 
plug and play, not lift a finger um, purchase. And you know, you can get some real bargains if you can get yourself out of that modality of thinking. You know, part of your workshop hobby ought to be, or should be, I think, if you want to do it on a shoestring, um, improving the existing tools that you have, uh, trading when you get a chance, when you see something for sale that's priced too low, that's better than what you have, go buy it. Don't waste any time. Don't hem haul round about it. Don't worry. Don't wring your hands. Go get it and then sell the tool you have. You know, that's, that's how you end up with a nice shop. Uh, and, and if you think about it, you're, when you sell a tool to somebody else, you're helping them get something that they value more than the money they're giving you. You know, you're helping them make their workshop better. So you're really helping other people and you help yourself by improving your workshop.